Uh, welcome to today's webinar um, co-organized by the Southeast Asia, China and Latin America IPR SME Help Desk. The topic of today is uh, protecting your business abroad and how EU SMEs can take advantage of the Patent Cooperation Treaty, PCT, in China, Southeast Asia and Latin America. I welcome you all. My name is Jim Stopman. I'm the project manager for the China IPR SME Help Desk. The um, EU international IPR help desks are um, an initiative by the European Commission to inform European SMEs about the importance of intellectual property in third markets with a specific focus on Latin America, China and Southeast Asia. The aim is really to give SMEs um, the tools to make informed and strategic decisions about their intellectual property. And all of the services that we offer are for free. A very quick overview of what we do can be found in this slide. First of all, we have an inquiry helpline. This is an actual email address that um, companies can write to with any question regarding IP, and we'll get an answer within three working days. In addition to that, we've got a website, a landing page with a lot of information available about um, intellectual property. We've got guides, infographics, podcasts, e-learning modules. So a lot of information freely available to sort of start thinking about how intellectual property applies to your company, to your business and to your products. We do a lot of trainings and webinars of which this is obviously an example, but we also travel throughout Latin America Europe, China, and Southeast Asia to try and reach as many SMEs as possible and make them aware of the importance of strategically thinking about their intellectual property. Now, without further ado, I'd like to take a few words to introduce the experts for today. Um, first, Elio De Tullio, um, an Italian lawyer, a very long-term expert of the China and Southeast Asia IPR help desk, based in Rome uh, with multiple years of experience working with Italian and European clients on matters of pertinence to intellectual property uh, in both Chinese and Southeast Asian markets. And he'll be discussing the PCT relevant issues from the perspective of China and Southeast Asia today. So thank you a lot to, uh, to Elio for joining today. Our second expert is Eli Salis, um, based out of Spain and very knowledgeable about all, all the Latin American markets with regards to intellectual property. And he will be talking today from the Latin America perspective regarding the PCT. So also thank you very much to Eli for, for joining us today. And I'd now like to give the floor to Eli, who will briefly start with an introduction on what the PCT is and whether there's such thing as a global patent. Thank you very much, uh, Jim, for the invitation to participate in this webinar today. Well, first of all, we need to know what is the PCT. The PCT, that is the Patent Corporation Treaty, is an international treaty with uh, more than 150 contracting states. Um, the PCT makes it possible to seek patent protection for an invasion in a large number of countries by filing a single international patent application instead of filing several separate national or regional patent applications. For example, if you are a European company who has filed a European patent application or a national applic application in your country, and you wish a protection for this invention in countries like, for example, Brazil, China, Mexico, Thailand, Taiwan, uh, and Colombia, with the PCT, you don't need during the priority period to file several national patent applications. Uh, the PCT also assists applicants in seeking um, patent protections internationally for uh, their inventions. And this is also important, it helps national patent offices uh, with their patent granting decisions. The PCT applications involve two different phases. First of all, the international phase, uh, and second, the national phase. Uh, regarding the international phase, uh, after filing uh, of the application, an international search report, uh, what we call the ISR, and a written opinion on the invention's potential patentability, 
quantitability is established. And this is very important because it's going to give the applicant an idea if mm, the, the patent is going to be granted later by the National Patent Office. If the applicant continues with applications upon request, and this is very important, an international preliminary examination report on patentability is also established. Applicants may also enter into national phases without requesting the examination report. So the question here is, when do you request the preliminary examination? Well, generally, when the written opinion reveals that the claims should be amended in order the invention to meet the requirements of the patent law. That is novelty and inventive step. And my colleague Elio is going to talk about these requirements later. Finally, during the examination process, the applicant may be asked to give further clarifications uh, to some amendments before the filing report is drawn up. Uh, this report contains an opinion on the compliance of the international application concerning its novelty, inventive and industrial applicability to provide the applicant with a strong basis uh, for evaluating the chances of obtaining the patent. However, and this is um, quite important, the report has no binding effect. Regarding the national phase, uh, the, applicant, um, the applicants must enter into national phases in order to seek protections in the Senate status by paying the national fees and providing additional doc documents. For example, translations if they are required by the national patent offices. The time limit for entering into national phase is 30 months from the international filing date or from the priority date, if there is any, uh, for many countries. And in some cases, and we, we are going to see uh, this later, 31 months. Uh, the processing of the applications with the national phase is carried out by the national offices according to their national rules, for example, further examination if required. And the international patent applications becomes separate national patents once it is granted in the designated states and subject to the national laws. For example, the protection term would vary from one, one country to other. Uh, finally, the decision on granted patents is taken uh, by national or regional offices in the national phase. That means that the PCT patent applications can be granted in one country, for example, Japan, and rejected in another country, for example, Guatemala. Next, please. Okay, in, in regarding the advantages of the, of the PCT, um, we have to say that um, this treaty streamlines the process of fulfilling um, the formality requirements. For example, at the time of filing the, at the, time of filing the PCT, the owner of this application does not need to translate the patent applications in different languages. Uh, that means that it postpones the major cost associated with seeking multinational patent protections. I think that this is one of the main advantages of the system. Uh, also, the international search report and the written opinion contain important information about the potential patentability of your invention and provide a strong basis for uh, you as applicant to make business decisions about how to proceed in the future. For example, if your invention appears uh, to be not patentable at the end of the inter international phase, you may abandon the PCT application and you would have saved the cost you would uh, otherwise have incurred by uh, directly seeking protection in foreign countries, appointing local patent agents in each uh, foreign country, preparing the necessary translations, and paying the national fees. Um, also, one of the advantages is that um, you may be able to fast track examination procedures in the national uh, phases in some contacting states that have the PCT patent prosecution highway agreements or uh, similar agreements. And finally, uh, the international applications can be put in order before a uh, national phase. Uh, this is uh, something that we, we will discuss uh, far, uh, later. 
So, um, I'm requested to talk about disadvantages, unfortunately. And uh, I would say that uh, uh, there are not so many disadvantages for PCT procedure because usually uh, SMEs, uh, um, when they start to, uh, to think to protect their invention abroad, they don't, do not have a clear idea where to go. And uh, uh, so if this is the case, the PCT is the right system because it's, it is a way to postpone the, uh, the priority date up to 30 or 31 months from the priority, priority date itself. Uh, so um, on the other side, um, PCT is a procedure. Uh, so uh, at the end of the process, uh, uh, it does not issue patent. Uh, and this concept is not always clear because uh, uh, at the end, you, you, not have, you will not have a patent, but you will only have the possibility, this possibility to uh, postpone uh, the protection abroad up to this uh, 30 or 31 months. Um, so you do not get into any um, substantive examination before <clears throat> national IP offices. So at the end of the day, if your main issue is to save money, probably PCT is, is not the right uh, a way to proceed. Uh, on the other side, if you have an urgent matter to uh, conclude or if uh, you have already uh, an existing uh, real possibility of exploitation in some country or entry into a negotiation uh, with a, a licensee or a partner or uh, somebody who like to get uh, your technology and exploit it in the country of destination, probably it is better to go uh, through the national uh, way. Uh, and in this way, you can uh, save some costs. Otherwise, the PCT is, uh, let's say, uh, the right way to preserve a worldwide uh, uh, protection of your invention for uh, more than 200 and a half years. Uh, next, please. Um, then another issue is that uh, there are countries uh, that are not yet covered by PCT, like Argentina, Myanmar, or Taiwan. There are some, um, some uh, ongoing negotiations, uh, but uh, of course, uh, uh, right now, um, in order to uh, obtain protection in these countries, you need to go uh, through the national phase. So it is, and uh, in order to go to, uh, through the national phase, uh, uh, this can be done, this has to be done uh, by 12 months from the priority date. So you, uh, SMEs uh, um, uh, should be very careful in order to consider these countries uh, that are not so many uh, because uh, PCT uh, members are more than 150 countries, uh, but uh, these few countries uh, should be considered by the 12 months themselves. Uh, then, of course, uh, there is a longer time to obtain the, the patent because the entry into the national phase is foreseen after 30, 31 months. And from that, phase, from that date, uh, so after two and a half years, you start the substan substantive examination of your patent. So you um, liaise with and you uh, get into, uh, let's say, a discussion with the national offices uh, that can issue, of course, uh, uh, office action, in connection with the uh, novelty and uh, inventive step of your invention. And you, um, and SMEs, uh, um, so, uh, should uh, take uh, even more time in order to uh, nationalize the, uh, the PCT. Uh, so the overall time for obtaining patent rights uh, uh, will be longer. Next, please. Um, so, uh, another um, uh, issue can be um, the, uh, the form of the, uh, of the application. So, it is highly advisable that uh, the form is the definitive one, since uh, 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 the cost to proceed with amendments uh, of, the, um, of the application could be higher if the, 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 the original form filed and, uh, at PCT level, so at WIPO level, uh, is not the definitive one. Uh, moreover, another um, issue is that uh, it is not possible to enter the uh, Italian or uh, some other countries like France national phase directly from the PCT because uh, um, uh, it is mandatory to first enter into the regional EPO phase and then after the obtaining the European patent uh, 
So after that, it has been issued, it is possible to validate the European patents uh, in Italy or in France. So in this case, the procedure can be quite long and, uh, you know, lasting also uh, something like uh, seven years uh, and, uh, and like that. Uh, so uh, there are uh, um, these kind of uh, uh, points to take into account uh, while uh, uh, you are uh, uh, getting to the PCT. Another thing is that, of course, the, uh, uh, the possible protection in more than 150 countries um, do not uh, um, um, involve uh, that you are already protected. So if there are any uh, infringement of violation, you need to be sure that you, are, you have saved money in order to um, react uh, against uh, this possible uh, uh, infringement. And uh, of course, while your patent is still pending. Next, please. Uh, well, uh, we have to take into account that only inventions may be protected via, um, through the PCT by applying for patents and utility models. Uh, for example, designs and framework protections cannot be obtained via the FCT. There are other international conventions dealing with this type of industrial property protections. For example, the Hague Agreement for Designs and the Madrid System for Trademarks. Uh, you have to consider that if you want to exploit your uh, patent uh, in a foreign country, uh, most of the time this product would also be covered or protected by uh, trademarks or by trade secrets. So when you, you are going abroad, you have to think globally. That is, you don't have to take into account only the patent protections, but also to have your trademark register in the country in which you are going to exploit your uh, product. And Sometimes, if you are going to, to look for a partner in those countries, uh, maybe you're going to license the, the, the patent uh, to this partner, and in several cases, you are not, going, you are not only going to uh, license the patent, but also the trade secrets. So think globally, and uh, when we are abroad, we have to, to, to have a, a comprehensive IP portfolio protection. Next. So um, let's go now uh, to um, study some uh, uh, formalities in connection with China and Southeast Asia. Uh, the, deadline, the deadline for PCT national phase entry in China is 30 months from the date of priority, and this time limit may be extended for two months upon the payment of the required fees. Uh, the designation of, of China is, uh, uh, includes also the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, uh, so you can uh, start uh, uh, the, procedure, the procedure also in uh, Hong Kong, and you can nationalize uh, your PCT uh, also in Hong Kong. In case China is the receiving office, uh, you are required to uh, file the English and Chinese application uh, both. However, after entering into the Chinese national phase, the translation into Chinese of the patent documents must be, pro must be provided to CNIPA. CNIPA is uh, the new China National Intellectual Property Administration that replaces uh, uh, the previous uh, uh, patent, uh, uh, China, Chinese Patent Office, uh, uh, China, Chinese uh, Trademark Office, uh, and also uh, the office uh, dealing with geographic indication, the AQ, uh, SIQ. Uh, starting from the beginning of 2019. So now this is the new authority uh, dealing with all IP rights uh, in China. Next, please. Um, as well as for the direct national patent applications, also in case of entering the Chinese uh, national phase from PCT, the application is subject to formal and substantive examination. So it is important that uh, the request for substantive examination must be filed by the applicant within three years uh, from the international filing or priority date. Uh, it, uh, of course, uh, when uh, you enter into the substantive examination, um, you will uh, be required to um, clarify, um, very probable uh, uh, that this happened in China, to clarify some aspect of uh, uh, novelty 
in case uh, uh, previous uh, uh, patent uh, uh, published uh, worldwide uh, can uh, interfere with your application uh, or inventive step if, if, if it is not sufficiently clear uh, the uh, technical solution uh, and the, the, uh, the inventive step of your invention. Uh, foreign applicants must appoint a Chinese agent as representative in order to enter into the Chinese national phase but it is always advisable to uh, first select uh, uh, EU agent uh, or uh, 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 an agent in the country where you take the decisions, where the, the, the head office of your company is, uh, because uh, uh, the agent, uh, the EU agent, will liaise with the local agent, uh, preserving a, a centralized approach and strategy to the protection of your invention. Next, please. Uh, in Southeast Asia, only Myanmar is not the contracting state of the PCT. Uh, the deadline for PCT national phase entry in uh, uh, Singapore, Cambodia, Brunei, Laos, Malaysia, Philippines and Thailand is 30 months from the date of priority. In the Vietnam and Indonesia, the deadline for PCT phase entry is 31 months from the priority date. So you need to um, uh, really have a, a time schedule uh, prepared in advance uh, in order to um, uh, not to miss any of these uh, deadlines. Uh, please uh, remember that uh, in Myanmar there is a discussion about the possible addition of Myanmar uh, to the um, uh, main uh, uh, international convention. There is also a new law uh, uh, under discussion, but uh, right now the situation is that uh, uh, there are no um, updates, uh, uh, effective updates uh, and uh, on this purpose. Next, please. Um, in some countries, it is necessary, it is mandatory to appoint an agent, like in Cambodia, Vietnam, Brunei, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Philippines and Thailand, while in Singapore, the indication of an address for service is sufficient. But again, uh, you need to preserve the um, um, centralized approach to, your, to the protection of your invention. So it, it is better that uh, you uh, um, uh, are advised by uh, your EU agent, uh, if you are a EU company, uh, in connection with uh, what is the best way to proceed. In Singapore, Brunei, Philippines and Malaysia, the patent application and related documents have to be translated into English, while in the other countries it's required the translation in the relevant uh, national languages like uh, Khmer for Cambodia, Vietnamese, Indonesian, Lao and Thai. Next. <coughs> Uh, the PCT national phase, uh, um, phases are conducted by the relevant national IP offices and the procedure to obtain a patent is substantially the same of a direct national application. So um, there are no um, substantial um, uh, differences in case you, uh, uh, you proceed with a national application or with a PCT application. Probably uh, in case of uh, a national application, the, um, uh, the process can be a little bit faster um, because you uh, avoid some, uh, um, uh, some, uh, uh, some, uh, that some documents uh, have been for, are forwarded to national offices. In general, Southeast Asia offices conduct a substantive examination of the invention uh, and the request for examinations has to be required by the applicant. Uh, so the substantive, the substantive examination um, involved an analysis uh, on uh, novelty, uh, so the, uh, the invention must be new compared to the state of art, to all the inventions uh, and uh, patent uh, applications uh, published or registered worldwide, but also compared to the, um, um, to the literature and uh, all uh, um, innovation uh, already um, uh, communicated to the public and uh, available uh, at any level. Uh, the inventive step uh, is the usual um, legal requirement for patents uh, and uh, it is related to the uh, capacity of the invention to, um, uh, to be uh, a technical solution to very complicated technical problems uh, for an expert uh, in that field. Uh, and industrial applicability uh, involves uh, the, the capacity of the invention to uh, be reproduced 
industrially and to um, be um, um, incorporated into a industrial product. Next, please. Uh, in Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia and Philippines, uh, uh, of course, uh, Thailand and Vietnam, uh, there are also uh, the small patents, the simple patents. Those that uh, uh, in European Union, in some countries of European Union, are called uh, utility models or petty patents in Laos uh, uh, or uh, utility innovations in Malaysia, utility solution patents in Vietnam. So they are uh, um, small inventions with a lower level of inventive step. In general, simple patents cover products and tools uh, that uh, um, make the application of the optimization of, pat of, uh, of patents, uh, existing patents or other uh, technical solutions easier or uh, more effective. Um, also, uh, simple patents like utility models should be uh, novel and industrially applicable, but the level, the degree of uh, inventive step required by the law and by uh, the, uh, the offices is uh, uh, lower. In some cases, the inventive step is not required at all, like in Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand and Vietnam. And in other cases, the innovation required is lesser compared to a standard patent. Usually, uh, there is no substantive examination of uh, uh, utility models and uh, uh, petty patents. Next, please. So, the process for obtaining a simple patent is generally shorter um, because, of course, there is no substantive ex examination. However, um, such uh, patents have a reduced term of protection uh, that uh, uh, goes from 10 to 7 years uh, from the filing date. Some uh, Southeast Asian patent offices, for example, Cambodia or Indonesia, may grant uh, patents in a faster way. The same patent has been granted in countries with more developed IP systems uh, like US, Japan, South Korea or EPO. Um, there is also uh, the possibility to, um, to uh, find an application at the uh, Asian Patent Examination Corporation, um, uh, the so-called ASPEC, that is a, a regional patent work sharing program involving nine of the ten uh, ASEAN countries, uh, so excluding Myanmar, so in this case, uh, the IP offices uh, share um, each other uh, search and examination results in order to obtain corresponding patents uh, faster and more efficiently. Um, in some uh, Southeast Asian countries, like Thailand, it is better to apply by the direct national application system uh, rather, through, uh, rather than through the PCT system in order to obtain a grant uh, of the patent in a reduced time. But usually, uh, if you, are, you have an urgency in some countries, you can always opt for the national phase because the PCT, um, of course, uh, requires, a little, requires a little bit more time. Next, please. Thank you, Elio. Well, here, I, I, the, I think that we should remark that there are some Latin American countries uh, not yet in the PCT, and those countries are Argentina, Paraguay, <clears throat> Uruguay, and Venezuela. And we are going to see later which are the implications of, uh, of this. Yes, next, please. Well, there are some common requirements and characteristics of, uh, in Latin America that Elio um, appointed for, for China and the Southeast Asia. For example, the deadline for uh, the PCT uh, national and uh, phase entry in Latin American countries is uh, 30 months uh, from the date of priority, with some exceptions for countries like Colombia, Costa Rica, and Ecuador. Um, we should also take into account that foreign applicants, that is an European company, must appoint a, a nation uh, as representative in order to enter into the national phase in most Latin American countries. And it's also uh, advisable to do this because of the uh, requirements of the uh, national uh, patent offices. And finally, the national patent office uh, conducts a substantive examination of invention and uh, the request for this examination has to be required by the own applicant. Next, please. 
Yes, as I said, there are some uh, some Latin American countries not member of the TCP. Uh, so, which are the, the the practical implications of this? For example, if you are a Spanish company and you want to extend the protection of your national patent in, in other countries, uh, you have to consider that the, during the um, priority uh, period, that is the 12 months, the year, uh, you can file the PCT application, but if you want protections in countries like Venezuela, Argentina, or Uruguay, you have to file national patent applications. If you don't do that, you are not going to have protections in those countries. Next, please. Well, I'm going to give you a clear example, and this is a real case uh, about a Spanish company uh, dealing in the bioagro uh, sector that wishes to extend the protection of uh, his national patent applications in uh, Latin American countries like Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Chile, and Ecuador. Uh, first of all, we have to, 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 to ask ourselves um, about the reasons to choose uh, these countries. Well, first of all, mm, there could be <coughs> commercial need for exclusivity there. Uh, also, the companies have to consider the cost to file, to prosecute a grant and maintain a patent in those countries. And uh, also, it's very important to, to consider the quality of the IP protection and enforcement, the duration of the examination and the quality of the examinations. Because today, poor systems may will uh, be tomorrow good systems. And I'm going to give you a clear example of this. Uh, if you file for a patent application in Brazil, it's going to take uh, at least 10 years to have your patent uh, granted in that country. And maybe in 10 years, uh, the technology covered by the, the patent is going to be obsolete. So you have to consider uh, when do you expect to, to have uh, the, the patent granted in, in the countries of interest. Um, and here are some uh, tips uh, that we usually give uh, European companies before uh, who have filed for an uh, international PCT application um, before entry into national states. First of all, you have to leave enough time, at least two or three months, uh, to prepare the translation of the international application. In the case of Latin American countries, you have to, 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 to make the translation into Spanish and Portuguese for Brazil. Uh, you need to send your local agent copies of the relevant documents uh, on, on the file, that is the published international application, the international search report and the written opinion, the international uh, preliminary examination report, and sometimes priority documents. Uh, another important tip is that where you would prefer avoiding paying additional claim fees, uh, you have to prepare your applications and uh, any amendments according to the national practice of the countries you are picking your skin protection. Uh, and finally, and as uh, Elio said before, you have to remember to monitor the time limits for uh, entering into national states. Um, they apply no matter of delays in the national phase. So, if the deadline to, to file uh, the uh, entry international phase is 30 months and you don't have yet the international examination report, you have to comply with uh, these 30 months. Next, please. So, before uh, starting uh, with this uh, interesting case in Indonesia, I would like to follow uh, Eli, Eli's uh, suggestion uh, and remember you that uh, remind you that uh, uh, it is always advisable to uh, uh, to uh, carry out a, a preliminary patent search before filing any patents. Uh, so this is uh, uh, valid for PCT as well. Of course, uh, even if PCT is a procedure um, that can be requested within 12 months from the priority date, it is always uh, um, advisable to uh, monitor the novelty and the best step of your invention autonomously uh, before uh, filing the first filing 
or uh, um, even before filing the PCT uh, application. On the other side, uh, um, it, can, it can be um, uh, reminded that uh, uh, if no substantive examination has been requested, the examination of your patent in case of infringement uh, will be carried out uh, before the court. So you need to, um, to think that uh, um, if your invention is weak in terms of novelty and inventive step, this, uh, um, the protection uh, could be not effective in case of infringement and you can have some troubles in uh, enforcing your rights. Let's go to this uh, case. The Belgian entrepreneur that started an activity related to food processing operation called Belsa Food in Indonesia. So during this activity, a plant manager of Belsa Food developed a new solution for the raw material cleaning process and the entrepreneur started to negotiate with them the possibility to, um, to exploit the uh, invention and offer him uh, a reward uh, sharing scheme for using and commercializing this uh, new solution in the name of the company. Um, the entrepreneur and the manager so discussed this, uh, um, uh, the terms and condition of this uh, agreement. Um, since uh, the employment agreement did not include uh, IP clauses in case of invention. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the manager um, uh, applied for a national patent in his own name in Indonesia, uh, and the patent was uh, uh, drafted by a local attorney in Bahasa. Next, please. So, uh, at this point, the entrepreneur discovered that the patent filing uh, was uh, done and required the manager to assign the application to Belsa Food. Uh, but this uh, was not the case. So the entrepreneur started the court litigation in order to ascertain the ownership of the rights of the patent, of the patent application. And in the meantime, while the court was uh, um, uh, the, 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 the court proceeding was still ongoing, um, the 12 months for applying. Uh, uh, for a PCT, so the time limit for PCT passed, and the manager no longer had economic resources to file overseas application within the Paris Convention priority period. So in this case, the court affirmed that Belsa Food had the right to claim the patent application, but uh, uh, at that time, um, uh, the, uh, the, the 12 months were expired. On the other side, uh, the new attorney appointed by the entrepreneur found that the patent specification were not uh, really well drafted um, and uh, uh, this together with the expiration of the priority date was a big problem for this patent. Next please. So uh, at the end uh, uh, the entrepreneur um, could uh, keep the invention only at national level and could not extend the patent application overseas. Uh, in the meantime, the manager uh, um, developed a new version of the innovative solution and found an investor in order to file a new patent application. We don't know yet how the story has ended, but uh, we have some lessons learned from this uh, uh, story. So first of all, um, if this, this has not been agreed and specified um, differently, uh, it is uh, uh, always advisable to include uh, clauses, clauses related to IP rights uh, in uh, employment contracts. Of course, uh, involved since the very beginning, so since the, the first filing, uh, an experienced patent attorney, and uh, use the PCT system in order to postpone and to defer the application deadline for uh, up to 30 or 31 months in order to evaluate the commercial feasibility and not to lose the priority date and have the possibility to extend the protection abroad uh, uh, with the uh, nationalization of PCT as uh, mentioned before. Next please. Uh, so uh, just to um, wrapping up, up the, uh, what it, it has been uh, presented today, uh, the PCT is a patent application filing system, not a granting system. So after uh, filing the PCT application, you need to nationalize uh, your, uh, um, your patent application. So you need to uh, uh, start uh, um, um, uh, a discussion and examination 
with the national offices in each, in each designated country. Um, it is the, the possibility, it uh, gives uh, SMEs the possibility to postpone the major costs uh, of nationalization, but also maintenance of uh, uh, patent rights, uh, um, so extending the protection of the invention, but also allocating uh, differently resources in order to, um, to proceed with the uh, substantive examination. Um, uh, the sign and trademark protection cannot be obtained by PCT because uh, there are other international conventions like the Madrid system and uh, the Hague agreement uh, that uh, allow uh, to uh, start international processes uh, um, through WIPO. Uh, so PCT is only related to patents uh, and uh, utility models and uh, one of the best tools available when seeking protection is PCT because uh, it is a way to start uh, and to plan a medium long term strategy of uh, protection uh, of your invention abroad in more than 150 country, countries. Uh, so um, probably this is uh, uh, my last uh, uh, chart. So. Uh, no, there are another. So take away messages. Um, so um, please use the PCT to defer the application deadline um, by another 30, 31 months uh, in order to evaluate, evaluate commercial feasibility of the invention. Make sure that the invention and the related documentation are definitive since uh, the cost to proceed uh, with amendments uh, can be high and pay attention to those countries that are not yet covered by the PCT uh, because uh, if you lose the first, uh, if you miss the first uh, um, deadline of 12 months, uh, probably you can miss the possibility to uh, uh, go further with your uh, uh, protection in these countries. Uh, so this is another deadline to uh, take into account uh, at least uh, until uh, all the countries of the world uh, will uh, become member of uh, the PCT system. Next. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Eliof. And, and Eli, of course, for this, uh, this fantastic um, presentation. I think now I'd like to give the floor to, um, to Marta, my colleague in, in Southeast Asia, who I think has um, a, a couple of, of questions as well. And I'd like to urge the audience as well, if there's any questions, to, uh, to, to write them down in the questions section. Um, of the of the chat board, but Marta, maybe over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you to the two speakers also in my behalf, and welcome uh, also in behalf of the um, uh, Southeast Asia uh, help desk. So we have a couple of questions from the audience. Um, there is the classical question of uh, if there is a way to estimate the. Uh, time uh, of the the timing, let's say, of the international uh, phase, uh, the first phase of the PCT. How long it will take? You you said that is going to be long, but uh, there is a way to estimate how long. Well, the international service report is delivery generally five or six months after the the, the PCT application has been filed. So uh, you are going to have to have this international search report with a written opinion in five, six months, and you are going to have a more or less clear idea if your uh, patent is going to be granted uh, in the foreign countries. Um, yeah, that is, the I think, one of the most important uh, deadline that you have to consider at the time of filing a PCT application. Okay, uh, thank you. And then there is another question that uh, asks if uh, there is a way to estimate the fees, like uh, we mentioned many times the Madrid system, uh, which gives you an um, indication of the fees on the WIPO website. There is something similar for the PCT or not? Mm. Well, well uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, there is, there is, um, uh, of course, when you file the PCT application, uh, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the payment of uh, um, the, uh, the initial fees that uh, amount uh, uh, to 3,000 euros, more or less, 3,200 euros. Um, but then uh, the, 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 the problem, what well, the problem, the, the issue is that uh, uh, you need to start the national phases. 
So when you start national phases, uh, um, probably the average uh, uh, of uh, uh, the average of the uh, the fees to be paid uh, uh, at uh, each single um, uh, national office uh, depends, of course, uh, on the national offices, uh, but uh, can be estimated, uh, including attorney's fees, uh, uh, in um, uh, something like 1,000, 2,000 euros per country, more or less. Of course, uh, this depends on uh, each country. I don't have the, uh, the, the figure about uh, 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 official fees uh, for each country, but I remember that there is a, a fact sheet uh, uh, developed by uh, uh, the uh, China and Southeast Asia IPR SME help desk uh, in which, uh, uh, and probably uh, on the website, in which uh, you can find uh, official fees per country uh, so related to China and Southeast Asian countries. So it is online. Yeah, yes. Thank you. We, I, <laughs> thank you for advertising the publication. <laughs> it's true. Uh, there is everything there. There is also a guide on patent done by the um, Southeast Asia IPR SME Help Desk, and I expect that to be also for the China. Uh, so yes, you can always refer to our publication. Thank you, Elio, for reminding that to the audience. Go and see the publication. Uh, and the other question, Marta, I'm trying I'm to. Sorry. Yes. I, I yes. just want to add something to what Elios yes. said, and is that it's very, very common to receive uh, official actions uh, from the national patent offices. And for example, in some countries, it's very, very common to receive up to two or three office actions, and you have okay. to deal with these office actions. And this means that you have to, to hire the, 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 the IP agents in the foreign countries and sometimes the, uh, the, the cost, the, the, the biggest cost of these PCP applications are the answers, the reply to these uh, office actions. And there are some countries in which, for example, one office action, um, if you consider official fees and the IP agent fees and, technical, uh, and the fees from, from the technical staff, it's going to be sometimes between 2,000 and 3,000 euros. Okay, yeah, thank I you. I definitely agree with uh, Eli. For instance, in China, uh, you have to expect uh, uh, two or three uh, office section, and uh, so in this case, uh, uh, it would be you need to allocate and to uh, um, save some resources in order to face with these uh, uh, documents. Okay, th thank you. Thank you for the very complete answer. Uh, there is a, a, a last uh, question, which I. Uh, the, it's, it's, it's been in reality already said during the presentation and this is if the, um, what do I, I can do if I want to fill an utility model or small patent for uh, via the PCT. Uh, maybe if you want you can um, elaborate a little bit of what I can do if I, if I have an invention that doesn't have the inventive step for a general patent but I would like to uh, pro seek protection also in those countries that have no. No, no small uh, patent like Singapore, for example, which is a big example, actually, uh, of exception. If you want to, to add something on this, on the use of uh, PCT for a uh, utility model kind of patent. Well, first of all, you need to, to, to carry out a preliminary analysis before filing the, the even the first filing or the PCT, uh, which countries uh, adopt the utility model or uh, or not, uh, and uh, then probably the the best way is to uh, uh, to liaise with your patent attorney, and uh, he will find the, the best solution in order to protect uh, uh, the utility model in in those countries in which uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, patents uh, are not in force. Okay. So, thank you. There are no other questions. Uh, as uh, my colleague has already, uh, Jim has already said, uh, you are welcome to ask uh, uh, more questions via email uh, to any one of the help desk, uh, help desks, 
and um, I, I want to thank you all uh, our speaker to for uh, participating on this webinar and to all the participants uh, a very warm thank you from the IPR uh, Southeast Asia Health Desk. Jim, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, thank you, Marta. Thanks again, Elio and uh, and Eli. A few very uh, short final words. Very important. Um, the IPR SME help desks are there for you. We're there to help you. Uh, today we talked about patents and the PCT, but obviously there's way more out there. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, as mentioned numerous times, please do write us. Um, the services and the helpline that we offer are fully confidential and it's first line advice on China, Latin America and Southeast Asia. And we work with a large number of IPR specialists on basically any given industry or sector. So if you have any very specific questions as well, please do not hesitate uh, to contact us. And we'd very much like to stress that these services are there for you. So please uh, make use of them. Last but not least, the mandatory social media slide. Please do stay connected. Um, we're very active on Twitter and on LinkedIn. And we have a blog with uh, very relevant and updated articles on the world of IP, and obviously a landing page with all IP information on Latin America, Southeast Asia, and China. So please follow us to stay up to date on new events, new publications, and new webinars. And we look forward to welcoming you to one of our future webinars. And thank you very much for attending.